Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Why, what is this? I'm getting anti-religious commentary, a hint of one-dimensional villains and or rednecks, and a sous-son of something really stupid trying to come across as scary, but instead coming across as really stupid. It's Stephen King time! Sometimes I feel bad picking on this guy's worst work, but his worst work is clearly having so much fun being his worst work that, in the end, everybody's having a good time. So let's keep the nostalgia ween tradition going by looking at his 2003 film, The Story Where Aliens Come Out of People's Butts. I mean Dreamcatcher, I mean... The Story Where Aliens Come Out of People's Butts. <laughs> Yep, this was the first book King wrote after his nearly fatal car accident in 1999. Does it show? Oh my god! With King, it's hard to tell. This is the film everyone remembers specifically for one reason. It has monsters that explode out of your ass. Ugh. Because apparently there's nothing more terrifying than shit weasels. You may laugh at me calling them that, but that's the official term even the movie gives them. What about the shit weasels? King said in an interview that he wanted to do for the toilet what Psycho did for the shower. But I don't think you can do that when Shit Weasel is the name that's being thrown around. What about the Shit Weasels? So let's take a look at what obviously came out of somebody's ass. Come on, King, that joke was gift wrapped by you. This is Dreamcatcher. We open with every early 2000s credit sequence with blurry close-ups of things. Yay, you're every kid who laid his head on the desk and held his eraser to his eye. As we see, the director is the writer of The Empire Strikes Back and The Force Awakens. And clearly, he's still getting his snow fetish on. Seriously, is this a thing? It starts with a psychiatrist named Henry who can read his patient's minds because he's a psychic. Wow, not even a minute in and we have a trope that he uses all the time. She called out to you from that big fancy oak bed. How could you know what happened? Doesn't matter. Okay, look, King, I know everybody has a style, but there's only so many ways I can make jokes about you using the same cliches. The Stephen King drinking game, the Stephen King board game, the trope razor, the dartboard, the Twilight Zone parody. I know you're very comfortable doing the same thing over and over and over, but I'm not. For the most part, do I really have to find a new way to make fun of your fear of originality? Hey, where's this take place anyway? And the board belongs to you, Tamara. Which category would you like to choose? Let's do unexplained psychics for 200. You'll find children and or adults can do literally the unexplained with their minds here. Malcolm. What is every Stephen King story ever written? Correct. Annoying long flashbacks for 400. That is the video daily double. Look, boys from the past being threatened by bullies has developed as wet cardboard. Tamara. What is every Stephen King story ever written? Correct. Let's do UGH for 600. An alcoholic. Of course. Of course an alcoholic. Jester. What is the point of me being here? No, I'm so sorry. The correct answer was what is every Stephen King story ever written? No, I'm seriously asking. What is the point of me being here? We needed a third space to be filled. Can I still get that sandwich you promised me? No. Join us next time on Stephen King Jeopardy, which will be almost immediately. So Henry uses his psychic powers to help paranoid people think they're even more paranoid. Barry, do you think this compulsive eating has something to do with thinking you killed your mother? That you're eating yourself to death? You're looking in my head! Stop it! Leave me alone! Subtle use of your talent. What happens to this guy? He ate himself to death. Kill the world! We then cut to Jason Lee, where he usually is after shooting a Chipmunks movie, as he gives a call to his other psychic friend, Jonesy, played by Damian Lewis. You wanna talk? No, you're trying to get home to Carl and the kids. What's up? I'm waiting to be cast as Deadpool. That's Ryan Reynolds or Jason Lee. God damn it. But Jonesy is suddenly inspired to do his best Stephen King impression. <laughs> if he didn't want people to talk about, he wouldn't have written that in there. In fact, it's kind of amazing how much this scene doesn't fit. After being picked up by that year's winner of Worst Actress in an Ambulance. I think it's no good. I think he's gone. Yeah, I'd want to die after hearing that read too. He spontaneously comes back to life, and we cut to six months later where he seems perfectly fine. What was the point of that? It's said later through some complicated King writing that because he technically died and came back, this blocks off part of his mind from the alien. He came back from dead. It must have changed him somehow. But why don't they just use the excuse that he's psychic as the reason why? It's a lot shorter and keeps the story more focused. This doesn't add anything to anything. 
except an excuse for me to play funny sound effects over it. Unless it somehow ties into that car being the love child of Christine and the Green Goblin truck from Maximum Overdrive. In which case, take all the time you need on that story! There are no wrong choices there. Our four psychic friends meet up yearly in their cabin in the woods to... be in their cabin in the woods. I don't know. I don't get camping. In the movies, when people wake up together in the morning, they immediately start kissing, nuzzling, and going at it. But what they never do is get up first, take a leak, and brush their goddamn teeth. Okay, you do not get to make fun of other movie cliches. If one of them was like, hey, should we talk about Stephen King cliches? There'd be four skeletons never heard from again. I'm filing that in the who gives a shit section of my memory warehouse. Uh, what's the memory warehouse? Speaking of libraries of cliches, they establish that everybody's mind has a memory warehouse. Honestly, not a bad idea, especially for a story about mind control. It even has a spot for recycled sepia tone memories. Some kid's shirt. So? It's new. Scooby-Doo. That was important to know. Scooby-Doo. Season 4, Casey Kasem was still shaggy, before the dark times of the scrappy years. Hey, you guys! They see a mentally disabled boy named Douglas, or as he says, Duddits, being beaten up by bullies. You better watch it. Why is that? I know who you are. I'm trembling with fear. So what do you think people will say when we tell them what we caught you doing? Call me crazy. I just don't like seeing scenes of kids named Douglas getting beaten up. Give the word, Henry. It's Pete Moore. No one can catch him. And he's going straight to his house to tell his mother what you did. Why are you asking for trouble? He likes this. He's getting attention. How do you know he likes? Okay, this isn't a debate over a new bill. It's bullies being bullies. Why is this taking so long? You want to fight us? Yes! Why? you lose. Why? And I want to tell the world! You want us to leave, is that it? Will the senator yield? <laughs> so they save Toby Neil Patrick McGuire and... On, sing to him? I feel so bad, I've got a worried mind Since I left my baby behind This gets my magic potty baby to piss up a storm. Back in modern day, they come across a hunter in the woods. I'm hunting wabbits who seems to be ill, so they take him inside. Hi, Joe Clarendon. Call me Beaver. Intentionally? But our hunter seems to be having terrible gas, coming out both ends. <laughs> Again, that doesn't seem particularly scary. Critic, we've peed our pants. Isn't that mostly terrifying and kind of humorous? No, it's mostly humorous and kind of ridiculous. It's complex. It's stupid. Stupidly complex. Complexly stupid. He just doesn't see how this can possibly be an alien invasion! God help you if our snot gets infected too. I'd like to see you try to find the humor in that. You know, sometimes I feel bad writing you two so dumb. Yeah, what the hell, man? Can't we ever be smart? Well, you could just be a series of catchphrases like Jason Lee. For some reason, they tried to give him one-liners that clearly wouldn't catch on, but they try to hammer in anyway. It's kind of embarrassing. Fuck me, Freddy. Bitch in a buzzsaw. Fuck me, Freddy. Prime and Netley's. Fuck me, Freddy. Fuckery is turning to fuckeros. Kiss my ginger! Double fuckero. Real Javanaba. Wubba lubba dub dub! Ricky ticky taffy bitch! Huh? That's strange. I don't remember those. Well, I remember it so you don't have to shit! Our work here is done. That really is gonna catch on! Meanwhile, the other two nearly crash into a lady just sitting in the middle of the road. I broke my leg. <laughs> I guess it is funny? Hello? Hello, I'll be your jump scare for the evening. Ah! Oh, sorry, I have shotgun arm syndrome. Can't help it. While the animals reenact Alaskan Lion King, a helicopter is seen flying overhead. This area is under temporary quarantine. Stay where you are. What do you mean quarantine? We got a sick guy down here. Yeah, we can totally hear you. You are smart. But it looks like their hunter pal is sicker than they realized. Go away. Open the door. We have to break it down. Can the man have some privacy? Let's do it. I'm not all that absolutely positive. I want to go in there. What if he's dying? Scooby Dooby Doo. We got some work to do now. Well, now you said that. I know you're serious. I mean, you'd have a stronger argument if you pointed out Flintstones were a modern Stone Age family, but nevertheless, strong words! 
Whoa, meet George Jetson. Thunder, thunder, thundercats. Ducktails. Woohoo! All right, that's enough, fellas. Snap out of it. Oh, oh my God! Oh, Tiny Toon Adventures. So there seems to be an awful monster they can't flush down. Oh, and an alien creature that Lee sits on to stop from getting out. Ah! 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 Find the damn tape! Man, I've never seen Jason Lee so terrified. What could be under there to scare him so much? Oh, of course! Future squeakwolves! Come on, Dave, think of all the genres we could do with pun titles. A rap musical called Chip Hop, a religious film called Holy Chip, and of course the Halloween special Scared Chipless. We're coming for you, Dave. The chip must blow! The chip must blow! So while the chip weasel seems under control, he, no joke, lets them out because he wanted his toothpick. <sighs> Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> All right, I get that they're trying to hint at some sort of compulsion with him, but even an OCD person wouldn't be like, oh my God, if I let go of this trigger, a bomb will explode. You know, this could be a little bit more symmetrical. <laughs> But it gets even sillier. Now that the monster's out, it leads to some pretty goofy stuff. Like fighting him off with a toilet brush, cutting his hand off and looking only slightly annoyed by it, and even a 90s crotch shot. I feel like Daniel Stern should do his girly cry from Home Alone. The creature ends up killing him as we're shown Stephen King let down alien number, I don't know, five, who takes control of his body. Meanwhile, we're introduced to two albino caterpillars with Morgan Freeman's face attached, who points out that these alien creatures who infect the human body and have their young burst out in bloody ways sounds a bit familiar. The men call the red stuff Ripley after the broad and the alien movies. See what I did there? That immediately doesn't make it a ripoff. I learned my crap from the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. Shut up! This is totally different! Yeah, Freeman plays a guy who really knows his shit, like making his soldiers give scouts honor, only to shoot their fingers off. That was nice. It talks about tons of needless military information that honestly plays little to no part in anything. I never picked terrain like this before. Do you know the Blue Unit Catechism? I handpicked every man in Blue Boy Group. Under what rules does Blue Unit operate? And there were visitors of the world they wouldn't rather own. Tell me how we do it. Going fast and hard. When a soldier disobeys a superior's orders. Uh, God, you know what this all leads to? At one point, Freeman tries to shoot our hero and he fails. That's it. So why are we listening to all this? There's a difference of opinion about the Ripley. Who has an opinion? Three star. General Matheson. When did you see him? Called me in yesterday. And what is the vaunted opinion? It's like dedicating a half hour of Snow White to talk about the Queen's foreign policies and social affairs. Nobody gives a shit. You fall off a cliff. Why are we stuck with this dueling pair of Dr. Wiley mustaches? And what about the shit weasels? Oh yeah, because he says that. That kind of makes it worth it. But the lady from before also has an alien shit out her ass. I'm sorry, King, it'll always be funny. As Peter tries to calm down by showing how well he can imitate Bill Paxton. So goddamn good. I can't believe he's a human. I knew you would. Ow. The shit weasel wants revenge for attacking his head, so he attacks his head in return. Oh my god, why do these things always go for the twins? I'll never sing baritone again. I'll show you. I'll give you deep fried pubic hair. Uh, no. No man stands up immediately after that. The correct response is unzip your fly and crawl around in the snow like a dog who has worms. Not that it matters though, as the possessed body of Jonesy is about to meet up with him. How do we know he's possessed? Well, his head chuns whenever he turns. Which goes really great with his hood sound effect. Yeah, even his hood has a sound effect. I swear to God, I'm not adding this. What are these aliens trying to be? Diabolical Mike Winslows? And, for no explained reason whatsoever, he suddenly has an English accent. What was that, Mr. Jones? What did we just pass on the road there? Oh my god, I can tell just from that couple of seconds, you have already earned your spot in the Hall of Fame of Over the Top Stephen King villains. Welcome to the lineup. I don't need you to give me any more, but I'd be so blessed if you do. Are you speaking to me? Yes, I am, Mr. Jones. Or is it... Jonesy. That's what your friends call you, isn't it? Let's be friends. I guess having an alien take over your mind turns you into a drunk Simon Pegg? I'm borrowing you. We're going to take a little journey. Fuck you. I know what that expression means. It makes no sense, but it's amazing. Pete, I need you to get onto the snowmobile right now. You sound like one of those James Bonds. 
Even in the memory warehouse, Jonesy has partially blocked off. That doesn't stop evil Eric Idle from knocking on his echoey door. Let me in. What have you got in that part of your mind? It'll just take me a while to find them. To find them. Think about letting me in. It's the polite thing to do. Polite thing to do. Man, Alien's got some good backup accompaniment. You know this guy Shaft is a mean mother. Shut your mouth. I'm just talking about Shaft. We can dig it. These extraterrestrials have an interesting way of doing things, don't they, guys? Mm. Malk? Tamara? Is it me, or do you guys seem a bit more... British than usual? I don't know what you mean. We're just our normal American selves. You sure you haven't been taken over by aliens? Because that would just make too much sense. Oh, oh yes. yes. Okay, well, go back to doing whatever non-alien things you were doing. Okay. I wonder why I crave mushy peas all of a sudden. Hey guys, quick announcement. I am going to be at Rhode Island Comic Con this year, November 11th to the 13th. Now this is kind of a big deal because if you look at the guest list, they have big names like Stan Lee, Gal Gadot, Kate Beckinsale, Alice Cooper, a lot of huge names, but not that many internet people. I'm one of the few ones there. So it's really important that you come and say hi and stuff like that. Of course, the other guests, but uh, definitely say hi to me because that will encourage them to see and get more internet people. Uh, because there's not that many there. If there are more, because they haven't released the whole guest list yet, if there are more, go see them too, because we definitely want to encourage them to bring out more internet celebrities. And I hear this is a phenomenal con, so definitely come, say hi, would love to see you guys, and hopefully I'll see you there. Take care. Freeman takes the two moths taped to his eyebrows to the alien ship and tries to destroy it. Owen, get him out of there! It's gonna blow! Move one group! He's firing it! Back off! We can get these last mothers! They're self-destructing! Back off! We're right on top! Get him back off! Don't you love it in movies when the military never do as they're told? Because when in their history is it ever hammered in they should follow orders? Disrespectful piece of shit. Get this. While the alien part of Jonesy's mind is distracted, Jonesy sneaks out and tries to pull all the information on Duddits into the locked room with him. Okay, I'm open to a visual representation of the mind and how it's being altered, but, um, mental Jonesy has a limp? And what takes the mental alien so long to get to him? He took over his mind pretty fast before. Why does the alien recognize where mental Jonesy is sometimes, but not other times? How are memories heavy? Or heavy enough to earn a grunt noise? I mean, does it make any sense to you guys? No. Come on, Malcolm. Let me see inside your mind. We can do cool whispering together. Damn! 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 Damn. Why is it that whenever we see you, you're trying to scare us through a door? I've soaked up all your memories of the Critics Purge review, and I know that you're deathly afraid of British people, based on all those American movies where they play bad guys. Oh my god, it's true. I've absorbed everything from the movies you like. I'm a literal film brain. And I'll get you and your little Tamara too. Time's a ticking, Tamra. Tick-tock. You don't fool me, you alien crumpet. I'm gonna find a way to Brexit out of here. It's futile. I've mastered the ability to control your mind, and there is absolutely no escape. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Stay scared. Hello? 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 Hey Malcolm, you in there? Yeah. Boy, this advanced alien race sure is easy to do. Yeah, you want to grab a bite of Portillo's? Sounds good. Where are they? Where are, Where are they? they? Come out, come out, wherever you are. My little micro machines. I need to fix you in the Lego set in my brain. That's so Malcolm and Tamara. Another strange thing this film suddenly implements are wipes. Now, not that there's anything wrong with using them in a film, but they literally come in an hour and a half into the movie. There hasn't been one before, and then suddenly, they're all over the place. Maybe he knew the movie was going south, so he wanted to remind people they worked on Star Wars. I keep expecting one of those wipes to reveal R2-D2. Uh. 
So Henry gets caught in quarantine, but he convinces Freeman's second in command that Freeman is nuts and going to kill everybody in the area. The soldier agrees with him, so he decides to break Henry out. You almost ran me down! I figured you'd read my mind and get out of the way. A perfectly valid point. But Jonesy calls Henry through a phone in his mind, and Henry answers his gun to talk. Hello? Jonesy! Oh my god! Where's he taking you? Massachusetts? He is. That it's okay. This is still a scary film, right? Was it ever meant to be scary? Because it's starting to look like a mix of Russian roulette, and whose line is it anyway? Hang in there, Jonesy. Jonesy! Jonesy! Jonesy, I can't hear you! Hello, operator! Operator! Oh, that's a lot of beep! And you know this dude's just thinking, oh my god, I've killed us all. I'm gonna be court-martial for this loon, and I doomed the human race. You don't know. Oh, Pokemon, gotta catch them all. So they find out where Duditz is, who's now played by Donnie Wahlberg, looking how half the new kids on the block look right now, and he tells his mom he needs to go stop an alien invasion. She, of course, has no problem with this. Goodbye, Daddy. Be a good boy. Now go save the world. And go score a touchdown! <laughs> but it turns out the gun has a tracking device, because of course it does. So Freeman chases after them, and they pray that they can outrun him before their Tim Blake Nelson melts. I'm not even sure why I used a helicopter. My eyebrows could have flown me here fast enough. Again, they're both trying to stop the alien, so this all seems pretty pointless. But let's wait and see, let's wait and see... Yeah, what? it was entirely pointless. Alien Jonesy shows his true form and wants to contaminate the drinking water supply with alien sperm. But thankfully, Duditz comes in to save the day. What are you be doing? We have some more to do now. Weirdest cartoon tie-in ever. He goes to fight the Men in Black bug, and it's revealed why Duditz was the way he was. Of course! He was an alien all along! Do you think his mother knew that? Was she impregnated? Was he taken over by the alien? Did he show up in a basket like a 1920s cartoon? We'll never know, because the alien is defeated, the last bug is squashed, and that's it. And they decided against an ending because I guess they figured we suffered enough. Um, thanks? This movie is all sorts of silly, trying to somehow be taken seriously. Maybe King's writing could have made some of these ideas work better in the book, but as a film, it's hilariously ridiculous. The only real downside is how slow it is. There's a lot of pointless talking, slow-moving scenes, and long periods of black nothingness that offer nothing visually or comedically entertaining. But it does still have evil British aliens, crazy Morgan Freemans, and of course, shit weasels. If that sounds insane enough to tickle your funny bone, then this is definitely one to check out. And speaking of weird, what's been up with you guys recently? You look like a Canadian rap group! It's time to begin our hostile takeover. Ooh. Hold on, Mr. McCritic! It's time for Animaniacs. Oh, bugger! Another British stereotype! Chester was an alien all along. That's why he acted so strange. That's why he was different from everyone else. No, that was just an alien disguised as me. I'm still really here. Oh. You really think all of my mental problems is because I was an alien, huh? It's not like that. No, 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 I get it. It can't be because of how I was born or my environment. Clearly being an alien explains it just as well. Uh, no. It's I... like if an Asian person walks by and I'm like, oh, maybe he looks that way because he's an alien. <sighs> it's a perfectly legit reason. I hope I will be seen as more than just an excuse for your stereotype, sir. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I have serious work to do. Change! You got say! Oh, come on, I'm a I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and... Happy flushing. Coming next week, it's the Top 11 Gravity Falls episodes. You demanded it, we're giving it to you. But you can see it now under Vessel's ad-free early access. Just $3 a month to see tons of people's videos early, as well as a bunch of other extra features. Check it out and get the early scoop. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. This one you've probably heard of before. Hell, you probably shopped there before. It's Goodwill. Goodwill is North America's leading nonprofit provider of education, training, and career services for people with disadvantages, as well as those with physical, mental, and emotional disabilities. You see their shops everywhere, you've probably gone there before, so you know where the money goes, how many great people are out there that give donations, and of course, how effective it is. 37 million people access Goodwill services to advance their careers and manage their finances. Over 312,000 people earn jobs with Goodwill's help. 42,000 Goodwill participants and employers earn credentials that can allow them to earn an additional $14.2 billion throughout their careers. On top of that, there's Goodwill Industries International, which is a nonpartisan nonprofit organization. They advocate for public policies that provide job training programs, employment placement services, and other local programs for people having a hard time finding employment. They of course appreciate your donations, but the great thing is you don't even have to do that. You can just go to their store, buy their stuff, see all the incredible things that they got and at what great prices, and clearly see how it's all going to a good cause. You can see how they do it on their YouTube channel, all the people they've helped out over the years, all the jobs they've gotten. It's a wonderful service that sometimes we take for granted. But you can show your thanks by going to their site, opening up your heart, and helping those in need.